decided to go out herping right after work today. I uh, just had this gut feeling that I would probably find something pretty cool. And so I took a little walk along a stream valley not far from my house. Um, and I'm on the high ground at this point. And what's kind of nice, it's a nice warm day. Uh, we have sun coming through the canopy and creating nice little warm pockets on the uh, forest floor here. Um, one of the things that caught my eye as I was making my way up this hill was this wood pile um, from a nearby house. The smart thing is these people kept the wood pile not on directly near their house, but actually in the wooded area. This is prime habitat for animals like this guy right here, who, if you don't realize, you can easily step on because it blends in so well with its surroundings. This is a northern copperhead sitting here sunning himself. Um, it's the first one I've caught this year, or not caught, it's the first one I came upon this year. And I'm probably not going to try to bother him just because it's really not trying to get away and it's allowing me to photograph and film it. So there's no point in trying to get it to pose for me. It's doing a perfect job on its own. Um, one of the tall tale signs about the copperhead, the way you identify them, are those dark brown hourglass or butterfly patterns along its back, surrounded by a lighter tan color uh, background in this particular case. Uh, the head is um, generally a bronze, or I guess some people might consider that copper, maybe hence the name. And other things, if you can get close enough without getting bit, of course, I'm not going to try to get too close. Um, is the pit, that little hole that's just in front of the eye that is also in between the eye and the nostril, which maybe you cannot see in this video. Um, that's its heat-seeking pit, and that's what it uses to detect warm-blooded prey. Uh, the eye itself is more like a cat eye or it's elliptical. And um, again, that is just a, a trait that you don't see any of the other non-venomous snakes around here. This is our only venomous snake. Uh, there's, as far as I know, there's no one really died from a copperhead bite, at least within the past several decades, um, and maybe even beyond that. Um, but you definitely don't want to get bit. It's apparently very painful. And as long as you respect this animal, it's going to respect you. Now, the only way this thing would probably bite me if I tried to pick it up or if I stepped on it. Okay, my experience with these guys is that if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Um, so. Oftentimes, though, people don't even wait to hesitate. They'll just they'll kill it outright. So, if you're concerned about copperheads in your neighborhood, one thing you want to avoid, and that is trying to stack wood or wood piles like this or mulch piles too close to your home. Because these are safe havens for these guys, and they will almost certainly be found where you have woods, wood piles, and, of course, rodents. Um, which are going to be found anyway. Um, they're bound to have copperheads. 